At a time when people are looking for an escape, I'm glad to know that the indie market is alive and well. Those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing alphas or betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished, so don't take this as the final product. So today we're going to be talking about World War 3, a game that I've personally been looking forward to ever since the reveal of Battlefield 5. I thought that Battlefield 5's gameplay was fine, but had a severe lack of customization and features, or at least when you compare it to its previous iterations, which if you want to watch that video, you can watch it right here. So, what is World War 3? Well, it's as if Battlefield 4 and Escape from Tarkov got together and had a baby and out popped World War 3. Except, the amount of customization is astounding. Anyone who watches this channel knows that I praise any game that has a good level of customization. But this is the most I think I've seen done in a video game where you could basically customize anything. If there's any game that really comes close to this, I think it'd have to be Ground Branch. That game is probably the closest, but Ground Branch doesn't have vehicles, so this one just tops it. Well, maybe I'm a 3, but it's not running on a good looking engine like this, so... Hmm. The point is, is that it's enough to make a gun nut go crazy. At least I think anyway. Visually, depending on the rig that you have, the game looks good. World War 3 is another game that's using the Unreal 4 engine, which is very common amongst indie titles, and it's using it to the best of its capabilities. It's nothing too stunning though, but that's okay because war isn't supposed to be pretty. When it comes to the optimization, it needs a little work, because when I would get into firefights, the frame rate would drop drastically, but then climb back up, and there would be the occasional stutters. When I tried to play on large maps, my game would lag like crazy. so I had to stick to medium maps. But honestly, that's just to be expected in early access, so not a deal breaker. World War 3 had a bad launch, and I think it's mostly because a lot of people were jumping ship from Battlefield to World War 3. When that happened, the server simply couldn't handle that many people getting into a server all at once, so it just pooped out, or that's my assumption anyway. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. What about the gameplay? Well, in my opinion, the gameplay is addicting. So much so that I almost didn't finish this video because of how sidetracked I was getting. I could almost look past the bad launch of frames drops because of how much fun I was having. The gunplay itself I thought was good, but people would criticize it saying that things weren't right. But we also have to understand that they aren't using mocap or motion capture. So I think they're physically animating all the things that people are doing. So if it looks a little wonky, I mean, I think that's the reason. If anybody has ever played Battlefield 4, then more than likely you're going to enjoy this game. This, oh my goodness, I like it a lot. It does not hold your hand. If you're not careful, you could get killed instantaneously. There's also friendly fire, so you have to be aware of that. There is sort of an armor system in this game where you carry a metal plate and a helmet. I actually noticed a difference. When you decide to take like a hat, then you essentially have like no armor on your head and you could get headshotted like like that. So I stuck with the helmet, even though I kind of wanted to put on the hat. I think a little detail that they had in the game is that if you shot someone with a helmet on, their helmet would actually fly off. I'm not sure if it only happened when they died or if you shot them in the head and their helmet flings off. Like, I don't know if um, they'll still be alive, like, but just without a helmet. But that's a neat little feature uh, that I remember seeing. Another thing to note about the armor is that when you're shooting at someone, you'll get hit markers in different colors. I believe the black hit marker means that you're hitting armor, so you're not doing any damage. The blue hit marker means that you're actually hitting him in a crucial spot. The red marker means that he's dead. And this is also supported by enemy killed at the middle of the screen. Certain players had the ability to drop ammo, medic packs, armor packs. I believe that there was more, but I didn't see all of them. Another thing that's in the game that people usually find on popular is a sort of kill streak mechanic which you can edit and customize in the menu. Most of the time I didn't use it because I kept forgetting about it. It was at the bottom of the screen so I hardly ever looked down there. But when I did, it was pretty helpful. The UAV and the mortars kept people away from specific areas. Kill streaks would also allow you to call in vehicles via airdrop. They'll come in with parachutes in like a box. The box will fall down and fall apart and the vehicle will be inside of it, which I thought was pretty cool. And yeah, it really worked in certain situations. Tanks are in the game. And the way that it works is that there's a circle that's in the middle of your screen, and that's where your mouse is, okay? That's where your mouse is looking. And the little X is where the cannon is actually looking. So you have to actually aim that X 
at a specific spot where it can actually shoot and the turret takes into account of as to where you're actually looking so if you're looking at a bad guy from the back side the turret will look like look above the back end of the tank because the back end is a little taller than the front end so you have to take that into account when you're uh, using the tank or lav lavs are stupid fast but tanks and lavs can both roll over cars and over some obstacles and through obstacles too there are some destructible environments there is sort of a damage system on the tank they can knock your view you out and on the screen it looks like uh your your screen is all shattered and it's like really weird to like drive with at the moment there are three maps that are playable and the maps look really good i think my favorite one is probably moscow because i just like the snow map the maps look really good but you know to me they're not really too spectacular because i never really cared too much about the map as long as i could distinguish an area from where another area is if that makes any sense then i'm okay with it overall the gameplay feels pretty solid but my biggest gripe with it would have to be the optimization like it seriously needs to be fixed because there are just too many times when i get into firefights and things start freezing for me and it's like no <laughs> so it's no secret that the you know the launch of this game was pretty bad i sort of expected this because a lot of people are jumping at least this is my opinion okay a lot of people were looking for a game that's kind of like battlefield 4 and when ea is not providing this type of game they're looking for you know another market to call home and a lot of people decided to jump ship from Battlefield to World War 3. And World War 3 is a very tiny indie title. And it almost made sense to me that these servers were just going to crash. But at the same time, the devs really should have accounted for this because we all know what they were trying to do here. Come on now. They were trying to capitalize on EA's delay of Battlefield. This was a business move. They were trying to take away people that wanted another modern Battlefield, which was a great move on their part. But at the same time, it's like, if you're going to do this, you have to make sure that everything is set up, which when things went wrong, I was kind of like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. <laughs> the servers were down for four days since launch. So because of this, as an apology, they decided to make everything free. So you were able to completely customize your character. I think how it's supposed to go is that as you play through the game, you unlock a bunch of this stuff. But because of all the delays, they said, okay, listen, we're sorry. We'll, we'll unlock everything for you so you can, you know, check out all the cool stuff. And also they allowed me to upload this video. Originally, this was going to come out on Wednesday, but because of the mess up, they said that, you know, everybody can just upload whatever they want so this is why there's a bunch of people coming out with videos pretty early so they just seriously need to fix the servers and optimize the game and this game is golden I really like this game and I hope to see that they actually fix it. The past couple of days I was able to get into games and I had a lot of fun, but there still were some games where not a lot of people would be in. There maybe like be like four people in total in that match and I just have to back out and get into another game. So a moral of the story, when it works, it's great, but when it doesn't, ooh. All right, well, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.